how has, like, do you even think it's summer right now? No, I mean, all the fun of the summer, I think, is, like, gone. Oh, you know? it's just, how, how have you been faring in all of this? Well, I mean, we were closed for a very long time. So, um, you know, it's very hard to get used to kind of doing things remotely. Yeah. I think that was very difficult. I'm really lucky because I live very close to my office, so I was able to work in the office so I could kind of like walk back and forth. I have to tell you, I've been thinking about you um, because your office is also on my daily walk. We are actually oh. neighbors up on the Upper East Side. So um, it's so wonderful to have you back on. And for everybody who is just tuning in now, um, Ryan is on vacation, but my lovely, lovely co-host this week is Dr. Jennifer Levine. She's a double board certified plastic surgeon. Now, you're going to have to help me out with this. One of them is with the, I'm going to look here. American Board of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. And then the second one is the American- Autolaryngology, I'll just say it. So it's also like head and neck surgery. So basically Uh anything from here up, it's like you are just the queen. And now, so I have to ask you, are people just, how many of your patients were just like flocking in to get the Botox, to get the filler? We had a couple of people saying like, this is an emergency service. You know, which is, of course, it's not an emergency service, but I think it's really hard because we're on Zoom or on House Party or all those other apps that we're really, we're looking at our faces in a different way. And and people were honestly like texting me, like I was on this, you know, um, you know, virtual cocktail party with my friends and I couldn't believe how I looked. So people were really uh, getting upset you know, and seeing yourself constantly on video yeah. is, is very, is very different and it's not easy. And I found myself like even, you know, I'd be like on a call, I'd be like, I was just like, pick up my face. Oh, and you know what? It's not just that it, we can't get the Botox and the fillers and the chemical peels and all of this stuff, you know, the skincare that we want. It's also the hair. It's also the gym. So it's this trifecta of like hair, face and body that haven't, been that we haven't been able to go to like the experts, the gym. I mean, Mm-mm. it's hard to do everything for yourself, especially right. since we're also like cleaning and cooking. I mean, yeah. And then compound it just by the stress, right? Of this whole yeah. situation. Yeah. I feel like I've said this a number of times. My sleep has been so wacky. I'll sleep yeah. for four, maybe five hours at a time. And then it's just up. Um, and while I don't think in my day to day that there's any actual stress going on, clearly there is. Well, I think it's just such an abnormal and unusual time that it's like yeah. it's really hard to get good quality sleep. And they also said that so many of you, like everyone's remembering their dreams a lot more now. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. So no. you hear these, yeah, there, there's a lot of people who are, be, because I guess we must not we're in like a, we are in a deeper form of sleep because I guess we're, we're dreaming, but we're also like close to waking. So I guess when you wake up, you remember your dreams, but they're also um, not necessarily pleasant because I think, I think with this whole thing, there's so much uncertainty. Oh, for sure. You know, so it's really hard to feel comfortable because no one knows really what's going on, how long it's going to last. And no one knows, period. I was just saying to a girlfriend today, if somebody was to give me the rules, here's everything you need to do. You need to um, wear a mask, right? You need to, you shouldn't visit your parents, get the antibody test. We got the antibody test and it's, which we have, which we thought we had it. um, And we actually tested positive. But even that, it's like, well, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. it's very confusing and I think it's, it's so not confusing. Really, it's not we don't really understand, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to be the life cycle of this virus, it's, it's going to come back, if it's not going to come back, if it's going to be like a regular flu, and it's going to come back every year or it's not. So there's a lot that's not known about it and that yeah. you know, and that that uncertainty is very difficult for anyone to deal with. I, I want to sort of shift gears a little bit. And um, because of my antibody test, I signed up to donate 
plasma. Yes. And um, they were asking me, well, have you ever donated blood? Which I haven't. And they said, well, this is, you know, we're going to do plasmapheresis. It's sort of separating. And what came to my mind, which is actually what you did on me um, for New Beauty Magazine was a vampire facial. Right. I was like, I, I kind of understand what's going on, but kind <laughs> of not. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, any any suggestions for that? I've never I've never done it, and I guess plasmapheresis is a little bit different than just giving blood normally. I don't know if you have to give more blood or less blood. I'm not. I don't know 100 percent how much blood you need to go do, but I think as they're doing it, they separate the blood. They do, and they put your red blood cells right. back, and then yes. they're just taking they out. They don't want your red blood cells. <laughs> so just they the just plasma. The other right. Obviously, everything that's good is in the plasma, so <laughs> take that, right. and then they put the other and stuff back. And is that the same plasma that you would centrifuge for the um, for, for the vampire facial? Yeah, mm. yeah, yes, because it's the plasma that has all of the growth factors, and that's where also the antibodies are. The other stuff, the red blood cells, obviously red blood cells are really important. They carry hemoglobin, which is what carries the oxygen. Right. So without red blood cells, we have no way of our cells or tissue getting oxygen. But in the rest of the blood cells, um, in the rest of the blood, that's where all of those other interesting things are. I wonder now, I was, uh, this is just coming to mind, but one of the things you can only donate plasma according to the, um, the, the New York blood society, um, that they say once every 28 days, this is going to sound so, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. terrible, but can you then you probably then couldn't go in and do a vampire facial. You probably could because you're not taking out as much blood. Okay. So the amount of blood that you take out, even though it seems like there's a lot of blood coming out, is really like minimal. Gotcha. So well, I guess really at this point too, it's like you might as well try to save a life first and then we can deal with our skin later. Yeah. Um, so getting on to today's topic, you know, yeah. Aside from the stress and the aggravation and everything that's going on, unemployment is at a record high. And I feel like for so many people, right, June is the time of like summer vacation, but there's mm -hmm. so many people now that are going to be doing job interviews. Yes. And, and I wanted to talk to you about some tips because I imagine too that beauty and, and the things that we used to do, um, the cosmetic procedures, that's going to change a little bit as well. Right. Do you think, I, I almost feel like, do you think that people are going to, is it almost taboo to look done? No, I think it's actually quite the opposite that people understand that it might be more important how their face looks than what they're wearing or buying like a status pocketbook or shoes like that kind of seems all like not necessary. We're socializing less. Right. Um, it's not, I think those are the items that people see as more frivolous, but because we're all looking at each other, either right. virtually or in person, I, I think how you look is even, even more, even more important than before, or people are much more aware of it. And they, if they want to do something, they want to do that. And right off the top, we all know that uh, when it comes to doing any kind of an interview, confidence is key, right? Yes. So we want to go in right. looking our best. Right. right. So that what are some so of true. what are some of the things that you feel um, we can be doing um, at home mm -hmm. first? You know, if we know that we've got an interview or that we know that we're going to have to start interviewing, what are some of the things we can do at home to help improve our overall appearance? So I would say the best thing to start doing at home is a great skincare routine. Mm -hmm. So incorporating a really good um, regimen in the morning and at night is going to make your skin look its best. And, you know, that means that even if we're home and we're not going outside too much, that also means that we're wearing sunblock because right. there is light that comes in through the windows. There's this blue light that comes from devices. So unfortunately, even if you're not going outside, you still need the sunblock. But now is a great time to really, you know, to, to get your skin ready. And, you know, it takes some time uh, to really see the, the changes, but it's a great time to start. 
So starting with that, I would say is, is, is really important. And now are there certain brands? I mean, I know that they're, uh, I use Skin Medica Retinol, yeah. but I'll use Murad, which is, you know, I, something that you can get at Sephora for, um, my cleanser and sometimes my moisturizer. Do you have certain brands that you feel like this is where you should be spending the money? Yeah. I mean, I personally think that if you're going to spend the money, you want to spend the money on medical grade skincare products rather than packaging and fragrance because you really want ingredients that work. And the ones that are dispensed in physician offices or or, or, or physicians, they are uh, backed by science. So they have ingredients that really work. And I think it's a better investment because there is research behind why these products are going to be successful. So okay. I would say that lines like Skin Medica or SkinCeuticals have some really great products. And there are also some really good products from Neocutis. So you kind of like mm. curate the best products from, from those types of brands and you could get a really great regimen. And now, do you think that a lot of people, because because a lot of these brands are only sold in dermatologist's office, um, are there other places to get them if we can't go you see can your get doctor? Them online. You yeah. can get them online. So that's um, like a But great maybe place. avoid, uh, maybe like avoid the Amazons and go direct I to would, their website. Yes, I would go directly yeah. to the website. Now, if you're a physician and you dispense it, you could actually, we all have like little microsites on our website. So you could right. go to your doctor's website and buy it from there. And at least with Skin Medica, they ship you the product for free. Mm -hmm. And it will arrive in two days. So it's, right. yeah. So you don't have to go to your doctor's office to get some of these products. You can buy them directly online. I just bumped up from the 0.05 retinol to the one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but what I was surprised was it's actually like a different, um, totally different consistency. The 0.5 mm -hmm. was in more of a yellow based cream and the, and the one is, is in a really nice, beautiful cream. But um, I think I'm ready because I didn't notice too much irritation to start. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can always start that like every other day. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of the retinols. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. okay. In addition to uh, our skincare, mm -hmm. I want to talk about some of the procedures that you feel that people are going to be coming back for. What are certain things that we might want to do? What are certain things that we might not want to do? So I think that procedures that have no downtime and have a positive effect relatively quickly will kind of have like the most bang for your buck. So something like Botox or any of the neuromodulators like Dysport, Zeman, Juvo are really going to do, they're going to do some really nice things. I mean, there's a lot of studies that even show that, you know, Botox in this area actually improves your mood because right. uh, of the biofeedback. So the muscle that makes that 11 is yeah. a muscle that we use when we're upset or have like displeasure. So if you put some of the uh, neuromodulator there, it actually prevents you from doing that and you get less biofeedback to your brain and it will actually make you feel better. They're, um, they're actually doing a study for it for depression Mm -hmm. So I think that there's some good research to show that that really? would be a really good place to start. So in addition to, you know, helping with lines and wrinkles, improving your eyebrow position, it may also improve your mood. So right. I think that that is a good bet. <laughs> Can you remind me again, do you know what was Botox? It was discovered because it was being used. So Botox is, is a neurotoxin, which is right. used to help. So it was originally used for muscle spasm. Right. right. And right. then they found so, that the people yes. so they looking were better and better. <laughs> for the muscle spasm. And these nice doctors that were in Canada, they were a husband and wife, the Carruthers. So they had injected somebody around their eye for the muscle spasm and the patient came back and said, you know what, could you inject it on the other side? Because I look younger on this side. side. And that's how Botox was kind of like born. Yay. And then the Carruthers actually did it on themselves and they saw what the effect was. And then from there, uh, they went on to explore the aesthetic indications, but that's, that's how that happened. So it really is a very safe medication because it has been used in people for many, many years. And obviously the people who have the muscle spasm, like you have that 
always. So you have to keep getting it. So people have been injected regularly with Botox for over yeah. 40 years. So it really is a very well established and safe medication when used properly. When used properly. So yes. make sure you're going to somebody yes. who it, it, you need it to is go, like, you don't want to go to someone who is not qualified. Right. And did you see there's a doctor in Florida that is doing like drive through Botox? No. You didn't see that. No, I did <laughs> not. Really? Yes. Yes. Uh, and was that because people were like, I have to have it? I mean, because I haven't in a while. I definitely am due. But you know, I guess because people have to have it. I guess he, you know, it doesn't. Was it in Palm it. Beach? I don't know where he, he's, I think his name is like Dr. Miami. So he's already like, um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway. So his rationale was like, there's less interaction with the patient. It's a quick procedure, you know? So why not, you know, do that. And you know, the rest of the medical community is like, this is a medical procedure. It should be done in a sterile environment. Like how could you just inject it? And then the person drives away. So, I mean, obviously there's a market for that. I don't think it's something that I would personally do, but. No, I would say hold off on that. Yeah, um, but it just goes to show you that people really do do want these products. Oh, well, I mean, of course we do. I think that, you know, for some people too, it's not just that it's, you know, the vanity of it, but it is somewhere in like the normalcy. And like you said, we're all, I mean, we're on Zoom calls all the time. So just like, you know, with the with the boom of social media and we saw a boom of plastic surgery procedures, um, certainly, you know, I, I, I can understand why people are excited to get back in, excited to have that done again. Um, in terms of job though, do you think that maybe it's not a good idea right now. Like if you've never had lip filler, maybe don't. I, I think anything that's going to make you feel self-conscious okay. is not going to be a good bet. I think anything that boosts your self-esteem or confidence is good. So like if you're feeling very draggy then and you know and you need a little bit of filler in your cheek and that lifts up your face and that makes you feel better about how you look, then that's probably a good bet. But right. I would say that lip filler may not be a good bet if you would be self-conscious that your lips were swollen. Sure. Then that would be distracting to you. Right. <laughs> so you may well, not and I guess it also depends on the job that you're going for, right? Because right now, just like some people wear masks and some people right. don't, um, and in New York, you'll certainly get mask shamed if you're not wearing one. Yes. Uh, I wonder what that feedback is going to be like for people who, um, you know, look obviously done, uh, especially when we, you know, when this first started and before they shut down the, the, the plastic surgeon's office, there was like a lot of, um, controversy over using PPE for things that weren't essential. Do you feel like now the PPE is stocked, that that's not an issue? I think there's yeah. probably enough PPE. I mean, I'm sure you saw there's like a guy on like 86th Street that's like selling PPE. Oh, yeah. Like instead of like, instead of selling like pocketbooks or, you know, cell phone cases, yeah. like you're selling PPE. <laughs> like, they, they, you know, it's all over the place. Like you can buy it at like Dwayne Reed or Rite Aid or you know, you can get the PPA. So I think that, or, or some form of face covering. So sure. I think that there is probably sufficient PPE, but I think that people do, like they need a pick me up. They need something that's going to make them look and feel better. Right. And some of these procedures that don't have the downtime are really, are really good. You know, right. I would not want to do something that was going to have a lot of like downtime or that was going to be, that could potentially expose you to infection. Like, I don't know that I feel really good about doing like a full face, like CO2 laser that, you know, that, you know, is going to open up all of your skin and potentially, you know, not be good, especially if you have to wear a mask and you can't put on the cream. And, you know, I, I think something like that may not be the smartest thing right now. Sure. And how, how are things now um, changing for the way that you're going to start seeing patients? Well, we have like a whole system in place. So we have a screening questionnaire that uh, we ask 
everyone before they make their, their appointment. And then when they come in, we ask them those same questions again. They're immediately escorted to a room after they wash their hands. We take their temperature. Right. You know, we do all of those things. Do you think you'll have to see less people? Yes, we also have less people. Right. Yeah. We try to have only one patient at a time in the office. Wow, that's got to just be tough. So we have people, you know, that, you know, if they have somewhere to wait, you know, that we say, okay, we will call you. Of course, in New York, that's not always possible, but if they live nearby or, you know, they, otherwise we have enough rooms that we can put them in a different room. So they're not, no one's in the waiting room. Got it. Um, So any other advice for people right now who, again, might be thinking that they need to do job interviews? Well, I think that for every person, it's going to boil down to like, what's going to make them feel like their best self. Right. You know, so I think also it's, it's really important to eat a healthy diet. I think that, you know, for a very long time, we were only eating like things like pizza and things that sure. were, you know, we couldn't get anything, but I think going back to eating those like fruits and vegetables, or at least like taking some vitamins, something. I mean, it was this morning. I literally woke up and was like, it's now we're three months into this. Uh, and I was like, boy, I, I'm i starting to feel it now. I hadn't felt like, uh, but you know, now it's like the Botox is completely gone. Uh, any muscle tone that I had been working out at the gym, I feel like right. is kind of gone. And right. um, ugh. Well, that's why, I mean, that's just like a great time for something like M-Sculpt. <laughs> that does right. like 20,000. You know, people, we need, we all need a little boost. Sure. You know, because we're depleted now. So I think this is a time that we've really like denied ourselves like most things, you know, yeah. for a very long time. And I think doing a procedure that has like very few side effects, you know, if done properly, like Botox or a little bit of filler is probably the way to go. And, you know, incorporating that with a good skincare routine and, you know, trying to do some exercise. And if you can't do that, you know, do the M sculpt. Right, right, right. And I saw on your site that you do the um, the non-invasive butt lift with Sculptra. Yes, yes. So we do that. <laughs> that's amazing, by the way. But that's, that's, yeah. uh, that's, that's a pretty penny. That's an investment, correct? It is an investment, but the thing about Sculptra is it actually makes the skin look better. So there's okay. two products that we could either use. We could either use Sculptra or Hyper Dilute Radius. And both of those products are going to cause your body to form collagen. Right. So in addition, it makes the whole skin look better and smoother. Right. Uh, and that those effects last much longer than the actual length of the product. So okay. there are continued benefits with it as well. Okay. And then uh, just again, I mean, I, I, I would suggest if you have a job right now, clearly you're not going to be showing your butt. I just totally <laughs> took it in a different direction, but um, also maybe well, keep your- on what their butts are looking at, especially like you can't go to the yeah. gym. I mean, I'm trying at home to do like, you know, it's just apps, no. And it's like, after a while, it's like very annoying. <laughs> it's just not the same. I would go to Lift Tonic. I even bought the weights. I, I have them here, but it's not the same. No. It's just not. Um, it's not. And you're used to like the community of the gym. Yeah. You know, other people, seeing people you know, and that's all gone. <sighs> and it might be a while before that sort of TBD, I guess, TBD. We'll see. We'll yeah. see how things go. Um, and and then just in general, I was going to say, if you are going for an interview, keep the makeup simple, right? Don't you think so? This is not the time to be like pulling out the lashes. Um, well, I think also since you're probably going to be at least arriving to the interview with a mask on. Right. Oh, yeah. Good, so, good point. So I think that having some eye makeup on is okay, but kind of keeping the rest of the face kind of like more free of makeup is probably better or as you said like keeping it a little more minimal or keeping to a lighter shade of lipstick so it doesn't you know because you're gonna have to wear the mask you know bringing up the mask um because the face is your specialty do you think we're going to see more instances of 
acne around yeah. him. And now that it's getting, it's like warm sure. outside. And sure. I don't know about you. I haven't found a breathable mask. I, they're yeah. all hot. Well, look, first of all, like it's hard to really say that we want the mask to be breathable because we're also trying to avoid getting infected. So right. it's kind of like, it's hard to know like which is the right thing. The masks that are more breathable are also less likely to protect you if someone's if you're in close contact with someone else. I think if you're by yourself, then wearing the, the more breathable mask is okay. But the masks can cause a lot of irritation to the skin. And especially right. the ones that are more occlusive, that are harder to breathe through, are really not going to allow any air. And then you have moisture from your mouth kind of going in that area. And you can also become irritated from the material that the masks are made of. Yeah. So, so what what can we do about that? So I think it's worth maybe investing in one of the washable masks. Okay. So I have one that has like, that's like a, it's mainly like cotton, but it has like copper fibers right. into it, which are also anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. So, and you're able to wash it. So something like that, that also has antibacterial properties in it. Okay. Are, are not um are a good a bad idea okay yeah. and then what about like products um if you start to notice that you're breaking out products with salicylic acid yeah, so some are of those, those like gentle pads for exfoliation can be quite helpful but okay. again like if your skin is very irritated sometimes like treating it very harshly is also not good so you have to kind of also be gentle with it so this is not a time to like squeeze it pick it. Right. <laughs> Don't try to pop it. Like yeah. none of that is really good. No, because it never gets you anywhere. No, um, it's going to get you a scar. <laughs> That's what's going to get you. No one wants that. Dr. Levine, thank you so much for oh, taking so the time to, to be here with us. It's so good to see you. I want to come in and see you in the office. Yes, yes. Um, but if people want to find out, if people want to come in and see you, what's the yes. best way to find you? So you can call us at 212-517-9400. And we're on Instagram. We're even on TikTok now, Facebook at Dr. Jennifer Levine. Yes, we have made it to TikTok. And our website, which is drjenniferlevine.com. Awesome. And of course, if you guys have questions you want us to ask, you can always write us at hello at our beauty podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Art Beauty Podcast. We hope you will like, subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you want to hear about. Uh, and as always, we're going to see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.